Pat McCracken, Johnny Universal Adjustment Bureau. Oh, hi, Pat. What's on your mind? A beautiful model, name of Dorothy Blair. Ooh, hey, wait. The girl with the million-dollar face? That's the one. Well, you probably got company. Hmm? She's on a lot of people's minds. Well, she's no daydream to me. She's a nightmare. Oh, come. Well, that face of hers may not be worth quite a million, but it's worth at least a hundred thousand. That's what we've got it insured for. So? So it looks like somebody's trying to tear it up. The policy? No, her face. She got slugged last night. Want to look? At her? Sure, I'll be right over. Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. And now, act one of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Home Office Universal Adjustment Bureau, Hartford, Connecticut. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the model picture matter. Expense account item one, $1.20 for a taxi from my apartment to your office, Pat, where I picked up Dorothy Blair's address, then headed for New York. That's item two, thirty-six twenty. I arrived at her apartment just as the doctor left. Even with a couple of bandages on her face, I think you've got a bargain, Pat, insuring it for only 100000 I guess I'm lucky, Mr. Dollar. My doctor says there won't be any permanent scars. Well, uh, just what happened, Miss Blair? Well, I came home last evening about dinner time. I opened the door to my apartment here and started to reach for the light switch, then suddenly I saw a shape beside me in the dark. Uh Uh-huh, and? Before I could do anything, he, he hit me on the side of the head. I think it was a gun. It stunned me and I fell to the floor. Then what? I... I remember hearing the door slam. When I could get on my feet and turn on the light, whoever it was had gone. I see. You think it could have been a burglar looking for money or valuables? I don't think it was a burglar, Mr. Dollar. You mean you have some idea who it was? Well? Jerry Dunsmuir. Who's he? A fashion photographer. A creep, Mr. Dollar. Oh, the real article, believe me. They ought to put that guy's eyes in jail. You modeled for him before? About a year ago. I swore I'd never do it again, and I didn't until yesterday. It will go on. Jerry'd gotten a commission to do a spread on winter fashions. He wanted to make some street shots with me and Tweed. Things like that. Street shots? Well, I figured the street would be a lot safer for me than his studio. But it didn't turn out that way, huh? No. After the second picture, he started in again with the same old line. And he's not very subtle, believe me. So? So I walked out on him. He didn't like it. But is that enough reason for him to break into your apartment and slug you? It wouldn't be for most people. But like I say, he's a creep. (sighs) Yeah. Okay, Miss Blair. Thanks. I'll have a talk with Dunsmuir. And that was easier said than done. I took a cab to his address. That's item three, a dollar sixty. But his studio was locked up tight. So I contacted my old friend, Detective Lieutenant Al Rico, at 18th Precinct Headquarters. You think you've got troubles, Johnny? Try some of mine on for size. Oh, like what, Al? Like an unsolved murder I got tossed in my lap. Oh, that one I've been reading about. The girl up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Edith Summers. No lead. Oh, sure, a real fat lead, except it's no good. Her ex-boyfriend, Ed Chatsworth. Lots of motive, but no case. Alibi? Airtight. So I got troubles. Now tell me yours. Mine? Well, I'm trying to get a lead on a fashion photographer named Jerry Dunsmuir. Dunsmuir? I never heard of him. How come you're interested? Dorothy Blair got slugged last evening. Oh, yeah, yeah. The girl with the million-dollar face. I heard about it. She thinks Dunsmuir might have done it. I went up to his studio to have a talk with him, but it was locked up. Well, I'll have a file check, but if we had anything hot on him, I think I'd remember. Yeah. 
Well, it was just a chance. Uh, excuse me. Rico. What? Yeah. Okay, I'll be right down. That was about your Jerry Dunsmuir, Johnny. Oh? A couple of my boys have found him. Great. Yeah. They found him floating face down in the river. Act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. And now, act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, and the model picture matter. Expense account item four, a dollar eighty, cab fare back to Dorothy Blair's apartment. She had company. I'd like you to meet Edward Chandler, Johnny. Hi. Glad to meet you, Mr. Dollar. Dorothy, I wonder if I could talk to you for a few minutes. Why? Certainly. Well, I've got to be running along anyway. Is it still okay for dinner, honey? Uh, sure. Eight o'clock. I'll pick you up. Bye, Mr. Dollar. Yeah, so long, Chandler. Dorothy. Did you talk to Jerry Dunsmuir? Now, look, you say Dunsmuir tried to get a date with you when he was taking some fashion shots of you on the street yesterday. That's right. He was pretty persistent about it. That's putting it mildly, John. And you think Dunsmuir is the one who was hiding in your apartment and slugged you last evening? Yes. Yeah. I think he must have been the one. Why, who else could it have been? And why are you asking me all this again? There's... There's nothing you haven't told me, Dorothy. Of course not. Why? Well, the police just fished Dunsmuir's body out of the river. He was... I haven't seen the medical examiner's report yet, but it's a good bet. People don't usually go for a swim with all their clothes on. But who could... Johnny, you... You certainly don't think I had anything to do with it. I didn't say that, Dorothy. But your tone of voice, the question. Look, I'm telling you the truth, Johnny. Can you prove it? I can prove the part about him taking pictures of me yesterday. This manila envelope. It came in the mail today. Here. It's from Dunn's Mirror Studio. He always sends me print. See? Here's one of me in a tweed coat. Here's one in a fingertip leg. Okay, okay, so he took pictures. I still want to know why you think it was Dunsmuir who slugged you if you couldn't see his face in the dark. Why? I guess because of the way he looked at me yesterday afternoon when I told him to stay away from me, not to call me again for a job. Oh, Johnny, believe me. You didn't see him after that, huh? Unless, of course, he was the one who slugged you in the dark. No. I didn't have anything to do with... with what happened to him. And I don't know who did. It's the truth, Johnny. Okay, Dorothy. If it is, I'll find out sooner or later. But if it isn't, I'll find that out, too. Maybe Dorothy Blair was leveling with me. But there were a few pretty important facts I didn't know. Was it really Dunsmuir who'd slugged her? And who killed Dunsmuir? And why? Also, this fellow I'd met at Dorothy's apartment, Edward Chandler... Where had I seen his face before? Item five, a dollar seventy-five. Cab fare to Dunsmuir Studio. A blonde secretary named Susan Billings was just closing up when I got there. She looked pretty dragged out. Please, please, Mister Dollar. I've already told the police all I know. Right now, I don't exactly need any more questions. What you need right now, Susan, is a drink. Come on. <laughs> Feeling better, Susan? Oh, yes. Thanks. But I I really don't know anything that would help you, Mr. Dollar. How long did you work for Jerry Dunsmuir? About a year. And you can't think of anyone who would have reason to kill him? Nobody. You know he had uh, quite a reputation for being sort of uh, eager with some of the models. That was a long time ago, Mr. Dollar. He changed. Not according to Dorothy Blair. I'm not interested in Dorothy Blair or lies about Jerry. Tell me, do you happen to know a man named Edward Chandler? I met him at her apartment. No. 
Did Jerry Dunsmuir ever mention him? Not that I remember. Hmm. So you think Dunsmuir had straightened himself out, that he? I know he had. How can you be sure? He told me. Oh, but you look, see, Mr. That... Dollar, Jerry and I, we were going to be married. Either Dorothy had been lying to me about what kind of a guy Dunn's girl was, or else Susan had been living in a dream world. Either way, I was fresh out of Leeds. I headed back to Lieutenant Rico's office, hoping I'd find some there. Johnny, the only thing we know for sure about Dunsmuir is that he sure had a weakness for women. Yeah, but Susan Billings believes that she was his one true love. I know, and I've been thinking about her. Maybe she found out about Dunsmuir's activities and didn't like it. It's a possibility, but if she knows more than she's told us, she's a pretty good actress. Mm -hmm. The same goes for Dorothy Blair, which reminds me I want to have another talk with Dorothy. I picked up a couple of names out of Dunsmuir's past, and I want to see if they mean anything to her. Want to come along? Sure, but we'll have to hurry. Hurry? Why? She has a dinner date with a guy named Chandler at 8 o'clock, and it's a quarter to right now. Okay, let's go. There. That's her apartment house right ahead. Wait a minute. Isn't that Dorothy coming out the front door? Yeah, with Chandler. Come on, we can still catch Hold them. it. What's that? Who'd you say he was? A friend of hers. His name is Chandler. I met him in her apartment this afternoon. Johnny, remember when you came to see me today, I told you I had a murder case in my lap? I mean, before the Dunsmuir murder? Sure, a girl, Edith Summers. I told you her ex-boyfriend was the logical suspect, except that he had an alibi. Ed Chatsworth. Oh, hey, wait a minute. I knew I'd seen that guy's picture somewhere. It was in the paper. Dorothy introduced him as Chandler. But his real name is Chatsworth. And now it turns out he's a friend of Dorothy's. <sighs> and you said either Dorothy had told us all she knew or she was a pretty good actress. Yeah. Well, it looks to me like she's a pretty good actress. <laughs> of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. Act three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, and the model picture matter. Well, it had started out as a real simple assignment, but it hadn't stayed that way long. All of a sudden, we had two murders on our hands, and it looked like there was a connection between them. Now, watching Dorothy Blair leave her apartment with Ed Chatsworth, we realized that she was somehow right in the middle of them. They're driving off in his car. On the tail of That won't be necessary. Ever since I questioned Chatsworth about the Edith Summers killing, I've had a tail on him. No, Johnny, what we better do right now is start putting some pieces together and see what they add up to. Okay. The first victim was Edith Summers. Killed in her apartment, the Blackton Arms. And you figure that her ex-boyfriend, Ed Chatsworth, had the motive. Well, we heard that Chatsworth wanted to drop her, but she wouldn't drop. But you say he has an alibi. Two people swear he was out of the city the day that she was killed. All right, all right. Dorothy Blair gets slugged in her apartment. She thinks the photographer, Dunsmuir, did it. Then Dunsmuir winds up dead that night. Right. And now we find out Dorothy and Chatsworth are friends. Begins to add up, Johnny. Uh, you think Chatsworth was trying to drop Edith Summers for Dorothy? If so, maybe they rigged a deal. Chatsworth was to get out of town while Dorothy handled Edith Summers. Ah, in that case, you're figuring Dunsmuir found out about the deal and came to blackmail Dorothy. Right. She won't go for it, so he slugs her. Then either she or Chatsworth, or both of them, decide to close Dunsmuir's mouth for keeps. Ah, it's a possibility, Al. Yeah. It is a possibility, isn't it? <laughs> Al dropped me off at my hotel and headed back to his office. Item six, two dollars, drinks. While I thought about the picture Al and I had built up to explain the killing. Well, it was all pretty logical, but somehow I couldn't buy it. Maybe like Al had hinted, that million-dollar face had gotten to me. 
If I could only talk to her alone, I felt I could find out if she was lying. About 10 o'clock, I went back to her apartment. No answer. Probably still out to dinner. I was about to leave when she stepped off the elevator. Why, Johnny, what are you... Hello, Dorothy. I'd like to talk to you. Well, I'm afraid I haven't time right now. Oh? Mr. Chandler's just parking his car. He'll be up in a few minutes. We have business. Your friend will have to wait. I want to talk with you. Why? All right. For just a minute. I don't understand all this, Johnny. Well, let's start out calling your friend Chandler by his real name, huh? Why? Ed Chatsworth. I don't understand. I thought his name was Chandler. Oh, yeah? What's this all about, Johnny? Oh, drop the act, Dorothy. I suppose the name Chatsworth doesn't mean anything to you. Why, no, it doesn't. How about Edith Summers? Wait. She was the girl who was killed the day before yesterday. She sure was. I read about it in the papers. But I didn't know her, Johnny. You're sure you and Chatsworth didn't happen to arrange her death? Johnny. What's this all about? And your friend Dunsmuir, he wasn't by any chance trying to blackmail you? I don't know what you're talking about. Please, believe me. I didn't have anything to do with either of those killings. Johnny, I swear it. Okay, okay, Dorothy. I I guess I never could buy it. But I don't get this buddy-buddy routine, you and Ed Chatsworth. I only met Ed Chatsworth, or Chandler, as he called himself, yesterday. You want... Let's say that again. That's right. He said he was organizing a big promotion and wanted to feature me in it. Why would he give you a line like that? I didn't realize it was a line. He sounded very convincing. He said he wanted to see some of my pictures to see if pictures, I... Pictures, pictures. Wait a minute. Those pictures Dunsmuir took of you. Ed's coming up any minute to see them. He wanted to see some outdoor shots, he said. When did Dunsmuir take those shots? The day before yesterday. The day Edith was killed. Where did he take them? We moved around from place to place. You still have the pictures? Right there on the table. Come on, let's take a look. Are these all that he took? As far as I know. Yeah. Oh, nothing here except you. Why? It's... Hey, wait, wait. This shot looks like the front of an apartment house. Part of the name in the picture. Black. Blackton Arms. The apartment where Edith was killed. Johnny, look. In the background, a man stepping out of the apartment house. Yeah, out of focus. Hard to... Hold it. What is it? Is there a service entrance to your apartment? Yes. Somebody just came in. Get down. I shoved her to the floor and hit the light switch. None too soon. I eased out my gun but couldn't see a thing. And I knew I had to locate him before he located us. There was a cigarette lighter on the coffee table. I heaved it toward the kitchen and my aim was pretty good. The flash of his gun pegged him for me. I turned on the lights. It was Chatsworth, all right. I'd hit him in the shoulder, but he'd keep for the state. Johnny... He's the one who killed us, Edith Summers? Yeah, sure. He had an alibi rig, but he spoiled it by walking out of her apartment into the background of that picture Dunsmuir took of you. Then he's also the one who was in my apartment. He probably recognized you by your face. Figured he could find the name of the photographer here. Slugged you when you came in. And I thought it was Jerry Dunsmuir. Poor Jerry. Yeah. Well, I imagine when Chatsworth comes to, we'll find that he killed Dunsmuir to get the negative. He certainly wanted that picture. Yeah. Most pictures don't do people justice. But I guess this one will do him all right. <laughs> Item 8, $36.80, transportation back home. Expense account total, $103 even. Remarks? Well... There's a little snapper to the story, Pat. You know, that picture Chatsworth was knocking himself out to get, he didn't realize it, but his face in the background was far too blurred to make an identification. Yours truly, 
Johnny Dollar. Our star will return in just a moment. Now, here is our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, well, the darling of me heart comes back to plague me again. My old friend, Meg McCarthy. So join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Johnny Dollar.